we have had a look at the plant kingdom now let's have a look at the animal kingdom let's learn the different groups and subgroups and the further classification that animal kingdom has and let's learn about the differences and similarities there are organisms which are eukaryotic multicellular and heterotrophic and these organisms they come under the category of animal kingdom the animal kingdom you know that organisms falling under this category they do not have cell walls rather they only have the presence of cell membranes okay and most animals in the animal kingdom they are mobile means they are able to locomote means they are able to travel from one place to another they are further classified based on the extent and the type of the body design means the kind of internal uh, cellular structure that these bodies have okay and uh, uh, several other differentiation okay and these bases these criteria uh, they help in differentiating these creatures into several following phylum and each phylum they have further divisions they have further divisions of classes families orders etc okay so let's have a look at this flow chart first all right now when we talk about the levels of organization we have plants that have the uh, the their body organization at the cellular level and these uh, these organisms are come under the category come under the phylum of porifera okay then you have um animals organisms existing uh and these organisms they have their body organization at the tissue level means the primitive cellular level has differentiated into certain tissues okay and this can be further divided into three category categories three um, bases and this basis of differentiation is done on the presence of coelom okay coelom is um you can uh, you know understand the concept of coelom as being an internal body cavity okay uh now there is a, a a small concept that you need to understand which will help you in maybe remembering the concept at least if not the names names you'll gradually learn once you are you know habituating yourself more with the flow charts and more with the chapter okay but first understand the concept the concept is that when an embryo is formed okay it has certain layer of cells that and those cells those tissues they uh, when the embryo grows into uh, into larger and larger and complex and complex uh, organism those cells at 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 the embryo level they didn't differentiate into other uh, cell structures into other tissue structures and they then they perform the designated function what i'm trying to say here is that that when uh, the embryo is formed there are certain cells that are designated to develop that are designated to differentiate uh, further into uh, some particular structure all right now you know that humans or other complex organisms they have an outer layer epithelial layer okay uh, now we only the outer layer is visible to us since we cannot look inside our at, at our internal organs right but there are two layers inside this outer layer that help um, constitute an organism okay these uh, uh these layers are the endoderm and the mesoderm basically there are three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so what happens when an embryo is formed and let's take an example of a human embryo a human embryo when a human embryo is formed the germ layer means this this embryo the the single cell we all developed from a single cell right so this single cell has three types of cell three types of cell linings that when that embryo further grows into uh, advanced and advanced uh, uh, you know um uh, structure okay we uh, these three layers they they differentiate into further uh, designated structures that i have been talking about so first is the ectoderm which is the outer layer which is responsible for the development of the outer layer the epithelial tissue okay as you go by the name mesoderm is responsible for the middle layer so ectoderm is responsible for the outer layer Mes mesoderm is responsible for the middle layer and endo uh, just go by the name endo means inner so endoderm is responsible for the innermost layer and depending upon what is a uh, uh, kind of uh, layers are there in an embryo tissue okay means uh, 
the number of layers that an embryo has obviously those number of layers the body the adult body will develop into naturally all right so porifera it does not have any of these okay it does not have a very advanced cellular or tissue level whereas other tissues okay they have either the endoderm or, or ectoderm or the endoderm or they have all three all right so uh, what happens is that the coelom is the internal body cavity the coelom develops from the mesoderm okay the coelom it develops from uh, the mesoderm and what happens in this coelom in this coelom our internal organs are there so basically there is uh, uh, there is a, an internal cavity and inside this internal ca cavity the other organs are placed all right so uh, you can understand this as for for example if this is your coelom okay and this is a cavity this is a very rough um, diagram i'm just stipulating you to uh, uh, in order for you to understand okay so suppose there is an organ a over here organ b organ c organ d so this uh, cavity ensures that these organs are protected they are there in an enclosed structure they are, they are although they are inside a body but inside also they are protected in some layer and it also has some fluid which further develops which further uh, enhances the protection which further gives extra protection to the to our internal organs summing up this concept that an embryo has three distinct layers the ectoderm which is the outer layer mesoderm which is the middle layer and endoderm which is the inner layer so ectoderm is responsible for differentiating into the epithelial tissue the outer layer when that embryo develops into an adult mesoderm is responsible for the middle layer that middle layer further gives rise to the coelom this coelom is the internal body cavity under which the internal organs they lay all right and lastly we have the endoderm that is the innermost layer inside uh, our body in which other further uh, other tissues they are present okay so uh, not all organisms have all these three layers not all organisms have all three all these three layers not all organisms even have coelom so this further differentiation after the cellular level when you come to the tissue level the further differentiation of organisms under the tissue level that happens uh, on the on the basis of whether the organism has the presence of a coelom or not okay so in those organisms that has no uh, which have no coelom they can be either divided into filenterata or platyhelminthes platyhelminthes have bilateral body means when that body is divided into uh, by by an imaginary plane the body you get equal halves okay and radial means that body is not divided into equal halves rather some parts some parts like rays all right like you, you can see here in this jellyfish sort of structure all right just get the concept here then you get the pseudo coelom means uh, a coelom like cavity is there but that is not the true coelom means the mesoderm is still not there just the ectoderm or the endoderm are there okay this is the nematoda then the true coelom means those uh, uh, those um, organisms that have these three layers that i have been talking about all these three layers and especially the mesoderm because the mesoderm is responsible for the formation of the coelom all right so firstly we have porifera that is at the cellular level all right then at the tissue level we have there is no coelom present between epidermis and gastrodermis epidermis is developing from the ectoderm like i told you the outer layer the epithelial cells and the gastrodermis is developing from the endoderm means the innermost layer okay so there is no middle cavity present means there is no mesoderm present responsible for the formation of coelom so there are only ectoderm and endoderm present this is present in cellenterata which has radial body structure means the body is divided into some sort of rays okay imaginary planes all right then you have platyhelminthes this is a bo bi bilateral body means when you well, when an imaginary plane is passed the body can be divided into equal halves then you have a pseudo coelom pseudo coelom means false coelom a coelom like cavity may be there but that may not be that is not the true coelom means there is no presence of mes mesoderm since there is no um, mesoderm there is no coelom okay and here also we only have the two layers ectoderm and endoderm this is the nematoda the fourth category the fifth one we are having annelida arthropoda and mollusca and this is now uh, 
all based on the presence of a true telum means on the presence of mesoderm means on the presence of all the three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm all right so this is further divided into two categories some mesodermal layers they formed from single cell during growth of an embryo all right so there is one just just one single layer of cell okay this is annelida arthropoda and mollusca whereas in the other category the endoderm gives rise to coelom all right not the mesoderm okay so in the first category we are having that the mesodermal cells they are responsible for the uh, single cell growth during the embryo but in the other category the coelom is basically present via the endoderm the endoderm gives rise to the coelom and this is further divided into the 8 9th and 10th category that is uh, echinodermata hemichordata and chordata all these now they uh, since the endoderm is giving rise to coelom so till now we would we were categorizing on the basis of uh, whether the body has mesoderm or not because mesoderm was responsible for the formation of endoderm uh, sorry mesoderm was responsible for the formation of coelom but since when the endoderm is giving rise to coelom we cannot compare and we cannot further classify um, on the basis of these three layers so we need other classification and thankfully there is uh, an uh, and stru a structure known as notochord on the basis of which we can divide the further further categories of organisms uh, in which the coelom is uh, arising from the endoderm and not the mesoderm got me so in those organisms where this uh, newer structure called notochord is absent those organisms are the echinodermata uh, the intermediate categories between means the category uh, of organism that fall in between the ones who do not have notochord and between the ones who do have notochord the, those are the hemichordata okay or the protochordata and finally you have the chordata means uh, you know the notochord is present in the least larval forms but very rudimentary means uh, they are very rudimentary in form they are not very fully highly developed these are the protochordata and finally the notochord is replaced by the vertebral column the spinal column that we humans have in adults these uh, are the vertebrates i'm summing it up again we have embryo in the embryo we have three uh, you can say layer and these layers further differentiate into either the outer lining or the middle lining or the innermost lining of a body okay these three layers the first layer the embryo level layer uh, embryo level layer or the germ cell level layer these are the ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm ectoderm forms to the outer mesoderm towards the inner and around towards the uh, sorry mesoderm towards the middle and end around towards the inner layer mesoderm the middle layer is responsible for an internal body cavity this body cavity is known as coelom inside the coelom we have a internal organs present it provides an extra protection an extra layer an extra uh, sort of uh, you know uh, protective um, aura you can say inside our internal organs uh, sorry uh, outside our internal organs covering our internal organs at the cellular level we have porifera at the tissue level we have a uh, basis division on the basis of whether the coelom is present or not so in organisms where there is no coelom it means there is only the outer layer and the inner layer that is the ectoderm and the endoderm giving rise to the epidermis and gastrodermis respectively two categories splenrata the body is divided radially into different parts platyhelminthes the body is divided bilaterally you know single plane dividing into equal halves then you have a false coelom present in nematoda and in the organism that have the true coelom present means all the three layers in uh, those category you have the first category the mesoderm uh, cells formed from single cell during the growth of embryo you have annelida arthropoda mollusca and in the last category where the true coelom is present that coelom uh, is not arising from mesoderm but rather we observe that the endoderm is giving rise to the coelom okay so now the differentiation occurs on the basis of the presence or absence of a structure known as notochord in those organisms where notochord is absent they are known as the echinodermata the intermediate characters means the those organisms where which which fall in between the ones uh, where the notochord is present uh, sorry absent or one where the notochord is present these are the hemichordata then in those organisms where the notochord is actually present they are the chordata all right and in the chordata 
in those organisms where the motor cord is present in a very rudimentary stage, not well, wellly fully differentiated stage. Those are the protocord data and where the notochord is uh, present in the larval stage but when the embryo grows into the adult the that notochord is replaced by a vertebral column the spinal column that we human also have those fall under the category of vertebrates so this is the classification and i hope i have made it simpler uh, i hope i have made it simpler for you the vertebrata category is further divided into a uh, into other body structures all right is further divided into organisms having some similar body structures and having some differences in the body structures now in those um, vertebrata where the where, where there is a presence of an exoskeleton means the skeleton has an outside covering outside layer of scales or an endoskeleton means the bone has some other layer or cartilage covering or, or some sort of covering fishes this occurs in pisces in fishes okay and then we have amphibia where you have uh, gills in the larval stage and lungs in most adult okay further division on the basis of exo and the endoskeleton reptilia they have exoskeleton of scales um, lying x outside water so there the exoskeleton is made up of scales like fishes but they uh, have differences okay uh, they lay eggs outside water rather than fishes who lay eggs inside water. Aves or the birds, okay, they have an exoskeleton made up of feathers, means their body is covered with feathers, like you have you observe that in birds, right? And they lay eggs outside water and they fly, their locomotion is through flying. Their four limbs are divided into wings. Then mammals, where the exoskeleton is made up of hair, means the outer body is covered with hair. We have external ears and they mostly give rise to young ones and that means they uh, mammals they do not lay eggs they do not lay eggs so this is a very simpler classification i hope this is easier for you to understand vertebrates with this you have been learning uh, right in your previous grades as well we have fishes we have amphibians we have reptiles we have birds and finally we have mammals now we will read about the phylums one by one at the cellular level we have the porifera these are non-motile animals attached to some solid support which comprises of spicules or calcium carbonate or silica so these are attached to some structures which give them solid support since they are not able to uh, give support to themselves because their body cells are not differentiated into the tissue levels all right they work at the cellular level and they have certain pores as you can see here in this picture they have certain pores all over the body uh, and through these pores water comes and goes out comes in and goes out all right and uh, since pores are all over the body these lead to a canal system that helps in circulating water and through the water that organism is also able to breathe oxygen so the the the, the outer layer is not one homogeneous layer but rather they it is it consists of pores that pores forms a canal system animals are covered with a hard outside uh, layer or skeleton that means the exoskeleton it comprises of spicules of calcium carbonate or silica that help them to survive that gives them extra support and they have very minimal differentiation that means as you know they are working at the cellular level they are not differentiated into tissues examples are sponges cycon euplectella or spongula now you have the category of cylindrata or they are also known as cnidaria these are the aquatic animals here uh, these uh, we, we, you don't have the present of coelom over here that means you only have the ectoderm and uh, the endoderm there is a cavity in the body hence the name cylindrate but this cavity is actually not um, not your coelom this cavity is just and 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 uh, a hollow structure inside the body not lined by any internal organs a hollow structure and that a uh, hollow structure has an opening one opening that is uh, that uh, functions both functions as both as the mouth mouth sorry or the anus okay so the porifera that has a whole canal system whole pores but this nidaria or cylindrata they uh, this have one mouth one opening one oriferous only that serves as both the mouth and the anus okay and uh, 
the body is made up of two layers of cells the ectoderm and the endoderm ectoderm one makes the outside cell of the body and the endoderm makes the inner lining of the body examples are hydra jellyfish or sea anemone and they live in colonies okay next you have the platyhelminthes um these are also uh, the other sort of organism uh, nidaria that their body was a radial all right but platyhelminthes is bilaterally symmetrical remember that imaginary plane meaning that the left and right halves of the body have same design they are symmetrical okay there are three layers of cells from which differentiated tissues can be made hence uh, why uh, this the, the these elements are known as triploblastic but the thing the important thing to remember here is that here the coelom is still absent although you are having all the three structures all the three differentiated tissues three layers of cells from which the different differentiated tissues can be made okay but the coelom is still absent and i hope you are able to understand this that those three three uh, layers of cell are the are the same layers that i have been talking about the ectoderm the mesoderm and the endoderm so what happens is that those organisms who have the presence of all these all these three layers we name them the triploblastic animals and those animals who only have the presence of ectoderm or the endoderm like we had seen in celentorata they are given the name of diploblastic diploblastic two layers ectoderm endoderm triploblastic three layers ecto meso and endoderm okay this is an example of platyhelminthes there is no true internal body cavity or coelom although it has a mesoderm but there is no true internal body cavity in which developed organs can be accommodated like i had explained you the body it is flattened dorsi ventrally like like you can see over here so um what it means to say is that the body the dorsal part means the upper part portion of the body is actually flat flat okay the top to bottom is flat which is why these animals are also known as flat worms they are either free living or parasitic example is planaria and liver fluke moving on you have the phylum nematoda which have which has a pseudo coelom means a false coelom which means a false body cavity so this is also triploblastic means all these the three germ layers they are present the ectoderm the mesoderm and the endoderm body is bilaterally symmetri symmetrical two equal halves okay body here is cylindrical rather than flattened so in uh, in the platyhelminthes in this one you have the flattened body in the nematoda one you have the cylindrical like you can see over here the in the ascaris such as cylindrical a tube tubular structure okay but a false body cavity is there so no true coelom is present these are very familiar as parasitic worms if you have uh, come across the name such as the disease of elephantiasis so the worms which cause elephantiasis the filarial worms or the worms in in your intestines round worm or the pin worms that you get okay example ascaris and wucheraria next moving on you have the annelida annelida now you are finally coming to uh, those organisms where a true body cavity is present means a coelom or a coelom is actually present and remember that here the mesoderm is giving rise to the coelom the mesoderm is actually uh, giving rise to the coelom these are bilaterally symmetrical again that equal halves one triploblastic means all the three layers are present okay and body in the annelida it is divided into ring like segments like you can see over here in the structure of earthworm ring like segments okay hence the name annelida example earthworms and also leech then you have arthropoda arthropoda is the phylum and in this phylum you have the largest number of animals so it is you can say that is the biggest phylum of the animal kingdom okay it is the biggest phylum of the animal kingdom all right it has a larger group of animals these are also bilaterally symmetrical to equal halves and it is also segmented just like the annelida there is an open circulatory system means there is no system of blood capillaries or blood vessels but rather the blood is flowing openly throughout the body they have jointed legs or the limbs they are jointed hence the word arthropod because arthropod means jointed legs example you have ants cockroaches grasshoppers scorpions even spiders you can see the the legs they are 
jointed like you you can see uh, some some segments over here right if you can follow this diagram of a spider all right so the legs they are jointed they are jointed uh, by some segments okay hence the 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 term jointed legs or hence the term arthropod okay and finally in this part we have the phylum mollusca these are also bilaterally symmetrical means equal hulls but the ceramic cavity here is reduced means there is the presence of cruise helium over here as well but it is not well differentiated okay so it is it has a reduced ceramic cavity and it has a very soft and a tender body and it is covered with a hard shell that is made up of calcium carbonate so if you have seen a snail or a mussels or even oysters okay so they are covered with a hard shell of calcium carbonate their original body their actual body lying inside that hard covering is soft so these are the phylums that you have learned here till this part of uh, the animal kingdom we'll be learning about the echinodermata and the chordata and the further structures of a uh, further uh, classifications of chordata like the vertebrata in the next part of this animal kingdom in this part of the animalia of the animal kingdom we will be learning about the other remaining phylums namely the uh, the echinodermata okay and we will also have a look at the phylum chordata okay and uh, we will learn that how a notochord is responsible for the presence of uh, for the classification of organisms under chordata and how they are some other um, uh, how notochord notochord is taken as a substitute for uh, you know the presence of a coelom okay uh, for the presence of the coelom that you have been learning till now so like coelom it develops from mesoderm and that was taken as a basis for the classification of organisms till now but from here on we will be looking at a structure known as notochord and the presence or absence of this structure or if the structure is present then how much differentiated it is whether it is being differentiated into a a, a vertebral column like you have in adult humans or whether it is rudimentary in some organisms that will be the basis of the classification of further phyla so you have echinodermata in greek echino means hedgehog so these organisms they have spiny uh, spines all around their body they are spiny skinned organisms like starfish or like sea urchins they have spines occurring covering all over their body and they are exclusively free living marine animals they are aquatic animals they are triploblastic means all three layers are present and see with present with coelom and remember that over here the coelom uh, is rising actually from endoderm and not from the mesoderm so the endoderm is giving rise to the coelom and not the mesoderm they have a peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around and the skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate just like in the phylum of mollusca example starfish and sea urchin now you're moving on to prochordata the subdivisions of chordata the prochordata okay or the protochordata and then you have the vertebrata so prochordata protochordata these animals are bilaterally symmetrical remember again that the mandibular line dividing the body into two equal halves triploblastic all three layers are present and they have a true coelom a true inner body cavity in addition they show a new feature of body design this structure that is the basis of a further division notochord in echinoderm in echinodermata the notochord is absent all right let me uh, write it over here for you the notochord is absent and in the prochordata and in the vertebrata this notochord is present all right and at least in some stages during the life so if not maybe uh, say in the in the adult stage then at least in the larval stage it is there rudimentary present so you have here a typical prochordata figure the notochord is there a dorsal hollow nerve cord is there and pharyngeal slits or gills are there okay so you have a note presence of a notochord you have presence of a uh, a hollow nerve cord dorsal hollow nerve cord you have the presence of gills and there is also a postanal tail but these three are are you can say uh, the major criteria that that you have to remember in a uh, chordata okay notochord is a long rod like support structure uh, the support structure that sup uh, provides support to the back 
of an animal that runs along the back of the animal providing support to the whole structure of the animal okay uh, like a one pivot through which or one support pillar around which the whole organism is able to stand or maybe able to say, walk or exist however the animal is existing and it is separating the nervous tissue from the gut means the nervous system the nerves the spinal column uh, and the nervous system the nerve tissues they are being separated from the gut tissues gut tissues means the other lying internal organs all right examples balanoglossus herdimoida and amphioxus you can see here in the diagram the on the left hand side you have the balanoglossus it has the proboscis collar trunk and in the lance-like structure in the amphioxus you see uh, the no presence of a notochord presence of a dorsal nerve cord you you can see gill slits in the pharynx the other structures are also there but these three are the important to remember and finally, you have the vertebrata, those coordinate that have a true vertebral column means the uh, means in the adult stage, the notochord is actually further differentiated into a true vertebral column or you can say a true spinal cord. Okay. An internal skeleton allowing a completely different distribution of muscle attachment points as compared to the other organisms that have that we have been viewing till now. Vertebrates, they are also bilaterally symmetrical, they are triploblastic, that means the presence of those three layers. They are coelomic, a true coelom lines the inner organs, okay, and they are segmented with complex differentiation of body organs and tissues. So, this is the most, you can say, advanced, um, okay, uh, uh, level of body organization. And all chordates possess the following features. I told you that there has to be a presence of node cord, there has to be a presence of dorsal nerve cord and there has to be a presence of paired gill uh, spouches. These three are the most important characteristics. Apart from these, apart from, from these, we know that uh, of course the ectoderm, mesoderm and the endoderm are there. It is a triploblastic organism and there is a presence of a coelom. So it is coelomate. Okay, but the three most important uh, uh, features of uh, the chordate the presence of a notochord, presence of a dorsal nerve cord, and presence of paired gill pouches. In addition, we also have that these organisms are triploblastic, presence of all the three layers, and these are coelomates. Now, vertebrates are grouped into six classes you have cyclostomata, you have physis, amphibia, reptilia, avis, and mammalia. So, we have seen a little bit of these. Now, let's you know. Um, just have a quick glance, okay, quick glance, re, uh, detailed structure. Cyclostomata or cyclostomes, they are jawless vertebrates, means those vertebrates who do not have jaw, all right, and they are characterized by having an elongated eel-like body, a circular mouth and slimy skin. So they are somewhat closer to the Pisces, but Pisces have jaws, these animals do not have jaws and they are more slimier, they have a slimy skin and they are scaleless, Pisces have scales. But these are scaleless. Okay, they live as ectoparasites or borers of other vertebrates. Example is Petromyzon, lamprey, and Mixtine or hackfish. When you come to uh, Pisces, you actually see that the skin is covered with scales, unlike uh, Cyclostomata, and they have jaws. Furthermore, their body is streamlined. That means it helps them in swimming, and they have fins and tails, proper fins and tails for swimming. Their skeleton. Can be made up of bone or cartilage. The intake of oxygen is by gills. These are poor cold blooded organs, means poikilothermic. Okay, means their body temperature is, uh, is not affected by the outside body temperature. So, whether the outside body temperature is very, uh, of course, still it is not too warm or too cold, but in a normal occurring circumstances, their, their body is not affected by the outside temperature. Alright, so they are cold-blooded animals and their hearts have two chambers. So, remember that all the vertebrates, they either have two-chambered hearts or three-chambered heart or four-chambered heart. Means their heart is divided into chambers, into structures. Okay, so either have, they will either have two chambers or either three chambers or four chambers. So, fishes, they have two chambers. Okay, two-chambered hearts, examples, rohu, tuna and shark. Then you have the amphibia. They are adapted to both. Uh, they adapted to live both on lung, uh, land and um, water. And their respiration respiration is through gills or lungs. All right. So those animals that are adapted to live on water, they respire through gills. And those animals that are adapted to live on land, they respire through 
lungs. Okay, and they have a presence of three-chambered heart. Example: frogs, toads, and salamander. Okay, frogs, toads, and salamander. Next, you have reptilia. So they are crawling animals. They they crawl. All right, they walk. They locomote via crawling. Their skin is rough and modified to withstand extreme temperatures. Hence, most of the the species they are found in desert regions as well. especially of lizards big iguanas big lizards the heart is three chambered but there is an exception in crocodile you have the four chambered heart these are also cold blooded animals means these are also poikilothermic means their body temperature is also not affected by the outside temperature examples lizards turtles snakes you must be familiar more with these classification of vertebrata than what we have been learning till now aves they are the birds you know that their body is covered with feathers means their exoskeleton is made up of feathers and their four limbs they are modified for flying means they have wings okay they breathe through lungs there is no gills over here uh warm blooded animals uh okay opposite of poikilothermic they have four chambered heart the cha heart is divided into four chambers all right example sparrow eagle crow and parrot okay and finally you have the phylum mammalia the characteristic feature of uh, this phylum is that mammary glands are present which produces milk to nurture their young ones so unlike the other uh, uh, creatures they uh, give birth to young ones they do not produce eggs and those they feed their young ones via uh, milk that is produced via mammary glands and their skin is covered with hair so the exoskeleton is made up of hairs and they have sweat gland and sebaceous Plants. They are also warm, warm-blooded animals like birds. So, like birds, they are, they are also affected by the outside temperature, and they have four-chambered heart. Most animals are viviparous. Like I told you, they give birth to young ones and they nurture the young ones via the mammary glands. And there is some exception, though. Some uh, uh, mammals, like platypus, they give uh, they give birth via producing eggs. they do not have um they do not give birth to young ones rather they produce eggs but they fall under the category of mam example man horse kangaroo and lion let's let's end this part by looking at a few questions how do porphyrian animals differ from cylindrate animals so if you may remember porphyrians they are at the cellular level their body is differentiated just uh uh till the cellular level okay but in the cylindrate animals true tissues are being formed this fall under uh, cylindrate animals they fall under the tissue level organization moreover the porphyrian animals they their body it is covered by pores okay they have pores all over their body and they have a distinct uh, canal system because of the presence of these pores so water goes in and out through these pores whereas in cylindrate animals they have a, a there is no presence of coelom in both of them okay but this has and uh, this has a body cavity all right and this has a body cavity and that cavity has one opening one uh, opening so rather than having a uh, pores Porphy porphyrian animals they have many openings many pores okay but cylindrate animals they only have one opening they only have one opening of this body cavity that opening functions both as the mouth and the anus okay so this uh, opening it functions both as the mouth and the anus all right so main difference between uh, porphyrian and cylindrate animals porphyrian works at the cellular level cylindrates works at the tissue level porphyrians they have pores all over their body a distinct canal system cylindrates they have a body cavity that is um that has one opening one orifice and not many openings like you have in porphyrian animals then you have how do annelid animals they differ from arthropods now you know that both these uh phylum they 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 are segmented they are ring like segments in uh, in annelids as well as uh, arthropods they are also segmented the difference is that arthropods they have jointed legs okay 
whereas annelids they they crawl like worms so they they don't have uh they don't have the presence of legs so you cannot say that whether the legs would be jointed or not rather the limbs are continuous you can say okay the the limbs are uh, are continuous and uh, arthropods they have an external skeleton okay they have some outer covering some outer protection whereas annelids if you may remember they have since they are worm like structure so their uh, uh, their skeleton is made up of fluid okay they have a fluid filled skeleton so both annelids and arthropods are segmented but the basic difference is the major difference is that um, annelids they are worm like structure so they don't have legs they they are slimy they crawl uh, arthropods they have jointed legs arthropods have an external outer covering outer skeleton while annelids they have a fluid filled skeleton since their body is more slimy okay now you will be uh, we will observe the differences between amphibians and reptiles so uh, you know that both of these are uh, able to live both on land as well as water okay um major difference that amphibians they have three chambered hearts reptiles they also have three chambered heart but there, there is an exception of crocodile crocodile has four chambered a uh, four chambered heart okay uh, the other uh, the other main differences difference is that amphibians they either breed through gills those animals living on water live in water they breed breathe through gills or those animals that live on land they breathe through lungs but in reptiles the animals only breathe through lungs so amphibians they are able to live both on land as well as water reptiles they also go inside water they also live inside water but they do not have gills to breathe they only have lungs amphibians they have both lungs uh, or gills or uh, bo they both have gills or um, lungs the other important distinction is that amphibians they go through external fertilization means that the fertilization that occurs the the uh, combining of uh, the two gametes that is occurring that is occurring outside the female body so that one uh, cell that is responsible for the formation of the whole organism that cell is forming outside the female body whereas in reptiles you have internal fertilization means that fertilization of the two gametes that combination that uh, you know that assimilation of those two gametes that is happening inside the female body so that one cell responsible for the uh, differentiating into the whole organism that cell is forming inside the female body in reptiles and in amphib amphibians we have the external fertilization the last question of this animal kingdom we have what are the differences between animals belonging to the aves group and those in the mammalia group so we have the aves and then we have the mammalia okay and you know that in the uh, mammalia group we have the presence of mammary gland okay and there is no mammary glands present in aves all right then the exoskeleton of aves they are uh, uh, they are built by feathers okay whereas mammals the exoskeleton they are built by hairs okay aves they lay eggs or they are oviparous okay whereas animals they are mostly viviparous means they give birth to young ones they give birth to young ones and they uh, nurture these young ones via the milk present in the mammary glands the only difference the only exception over here that there is a, an organism there is a mammal known as platypus that uh, falls under the category of mammalia falls under the group mammalia but it lays eggs okay so these are the major differences between these two groups and with this we complete the longish but the important and hopefully interesting part the animalia kingdom later on we'll be having a quick revision but before that first we will have a look at the nomenclature about the classification that we have been discussing and talking about how do you 
uh, write the names of these different classifications. So let's we will find out that in the next part of the chapter.